So not at the same time in a rather totalitarian way, but in a way um, we get sort of used to one element and then we go to the next and then in the end maybe all they all come together. So what I do now, in, because I can't show you the whole piece uh, and the video is bad as well, uh, it's just a rehearsal video, it's not a very good uh, quality. What I want to do is to show you a few zappings through different scenes of this piece and explain what is my idea about it here. So I start with the first one. And um, what is interesting, yes, notice you can reduce the light. Um, what is interesting is that that it starts, it's not so interesting actually, but it's quite normal, it starts like a string quartet concert. But what is, and you, you will see now the string quartet is entering, um, and what is interesting for me, and I didn't think about it while I did it, when I did it, of course I wanted to disappoint somehow the audience who expecting a theatre piece. Um, but interesting is that the habit of the audience is already changing with this first entrance because a theatre audience would never clap when the performers enter the stage. Um, but here, uh, when we perform this piece, um, they very often start clapping when the string quartet enters, which means there's part of the audience who is, um, who is familiar with concert uh, habits. And maybe they don't even think about it, but maybe it sort of reflects that when the string quartet enters the uh, stage, that you start clapping because for the musicians. And this happens a lot whenever we perform this. We don't hear it here in this version. Ah, here we go. Okay. Um, playing um, two movements of a string quarter from Shostakovich and I would like to go to the end of it in, uh, and want to make you draw your attention um, on, on a certain point uh, of the bridge of this first scene to the next scene. Um, before, by the change of lights, we can also see, and I, we can also, I could also experience in my um, talks and discussions with an audience, that um, the fact that we hear a string quartet in a theater context, with a theater lighting, which is a backlighting here, you, you just started to see it over here, it changes the, the attention completely to the string quartet. The people start thinking about the, the bows rather more than than, um, than the, the faces, because the backlighting um, inf reinforces that. Um, so the whole perspective switched slowly with the light change from an only concert attention to a theater attention. I'll try to find the work good. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, no, it's not so easy to handle this, to handle this. Wait a second, wait a second. It's not so easy to handle this remote. While, while we hear uh, electronical processing of the last chord of the Shostakovich string quartet, um, the floor will unfold its white square stage 
which is more than just a bridge between two scenes. So it's rather, it's not only a bridge, it's rather an image by itself, and it's quite mysterious because you can't really, um, um, you don't really know how this has been done, how this white, um, I've talked to a lot of people after the show also, um, how this white square is being, being processed and unfolded. Um, and it's already another example of what I mean with separation of elements, that, that um, a stage, Design, for example, is not here only to serve to serve a certain word of a, of the priority of a text or um, um, to accompany a musical movement. It's rather the opposite. After the priority of the music, the first scene here is an image which is just unfolding itself, rather as an inspiration by visual arts. And then here comes the actor. who are not familiar with French, like me, I'm not either, but I work, I love to work uh, with French, with this French actor, uh, not only because if he's a fantastic actor, but also probably because I have a better sight, in, a better sight on the musicality of the language when I don't understand it so much. And um, there's another quote in the same, same article which I already started to um, speak of from Gertrude Stein, uh, Lectures in America in the 20s or 30s published <coughs> and um, then she describes an experience she had when she was looking theatre uh, in her youth and she said it was also foreign and Sarah Bernhardt wa was, in, was in the city um, a famous French actress in the 19th century and uh, it was also foreign and her voice being so varied, varied and it all being so French I could rest in it untroubled and I did so she didn't have to understand, and she could rest in it untroubled, because in the same article she describes in a very interesting way, which we don't find when we, uh, when we uh, hear in, uh, contemporary authors talking, she describes the uncomfortableness um, in being, getting acquainted to a theatre play, and that the rhythm of the perception is always before or behind a theatrical action. And uh, in this French, uh, Zara Bernard performance, which she attended as a young girl of 14, 15, 16, she could rest in it untroubled, and she did. And the manners and customs of the French theatre, she says, created a thing in itself. What he said in this, from Canetti, the, one of the first quotes here in the piece, he says, I have no sounds that could serve to soothe me, no violoncello like him, no lament that anyone could recognize as a lament because it sounds subdued in an expressible, tender language. I have only these lines on the yellowish paper and words that are never new, for they keep saying the same thing through an entire life, what he says as a writer. What I try to exemplify with this little excerpt is that, as you could hear the voice of the actor, very brilliant, uh, the audience can do as well, because the, vo the actor has a, has a microphone, and there's a complete separation of voice and body, of text and body, um, which I love to do.